And good morning. Just about done. There we go. Do -do. And oh, this handles multiple leaks. All right, just about there. All right. Oh, I, I, silly me. All right, there we go. Going through the surprise me station, just thumbs upping songs, adding them to the, uh, adding them to the like list. I do like big band stuff. Side effect of having been in a big band. You go. Oh, you know what? I should really. You know, I haven't been announcing in the Discord. I should probably announce there too. It's been a while. What? That's my drink, I should. There we go. Okay. And I need the... Yep, good, good, good. We're going to jump into it. So, what does... What is this going to look like? I think that... We could probably break this up into multiple pieces. Um... It's a little small. Bump that up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did I do there? One more? Might be a little too much. Easy on the stream, though. Just to read there. I want halfway, you know? Halfway between those. I wonder if we can do halfway. Settings. This would be at the bottom, right? Oh, wait, did, did I? I don't remember if I thumbs up that last one. All right. Terminal font weight. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Editor out font size 14. Fifteen? It's not bad. Forty lines or so on the screen. Is that visible? That looks alright. We'll leave it. Alright. With that... So we are going to work on parsing hrefs with Chumsky. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set up a test first, and then we'll add, add some code. 
just, just to help manage expectations here. Because we're not doing full detection. I don't think we need to. Um, what I would like is to match things that start with HTTP colon slash slash or HTTPS colon slash slash. And I, don't, I don't really want to match things like, you know, just simply google.com like no we we could but then we would have to find a series of you know tlds and that list right now is rather large so i'm going to simplify the problem by saying we're going to match these things it's going to be either one of these that or that followed by some series of words separated by dots, right? Followed by a slash, maybe a port. Do we really want to match a port for this? If somebody's sending a link and it, mm, we might skip the port bits. Where you're also definitely going to skip the uh, user at pass. Uh, was it user colon pass at? I, I forget what, what that even is at this point. I know there's something there and we could find it. And then we have a question mark with A equals B and C equals D. And then this, then white space, and end. So really, this is what we're looking to make. Um, I wonder if we could keep this super simple and just start with this and go to search for a non white space character if we did that we might things like uh parens might fail right because if you had http colon slash slash foobar.com right then it then it would actually catch that um i don't know if we care that much Hmm, if it'll be an issue. But let's have fun just trying to build it out. Uh, I want to look at... Did I get the... That's small. the uh let's see let's just ask google well, that's the oracle or duck duck go can urls contain uh special characters they get escaped but That's not entirely helpful. Oh, here we go. Not all special characters will cause an issue in your URL. There are many safe characters. Other non-safe characters risk poor readability, breaking some browsers and causing issues for crawlers. All right. Or chat chat things <laughs> I 
actually just look at the RFC. of URL scheme URL URL character encoding issues yes unsafe Faces are not allowed. Oh, interesting. The quote mark is used to delimit URLs in some systems. Fascinating. Fragment anchor, okay. Encoding other characters. Always and other transports are known to sometimes modify such characters. Gotcha. Gotcha. All unsafe characters must always be encoded within a URL. we start this let's hey moscow bish how you doing message parser let's create a new one um href parser what's the return type Simple parser, yeah, that. Cool aggressive here this morning with with the scrolling. URLs. We are parsing URLs. Is that it's never used, it's fine. Yeah, we're going to need a new part for that, but eventually. Let's go ahead and add it though. href. we could say let href equals href parser no no not like that maybe because the type because it's just a to do at the moment Let's match the scheme. Let's scheme equals 
Now, how do we want to... I'm sorry about that. How do we want to do this? So I need to match a word. How do we match a word? Now watch your eyes. This is bright. The RFC is... There we go. Let's get you. Is it uh, text? style identif identifier when would you use this or how do you use it to give it a character. Hey, Xenocron, how you doing? I want this to be exact. I do not believe we can use this. It's useful, though. Tiv? Oh, we can use filter, can't we? I don't really want to use just for this, like just H, then just T, then like HTML using just. You doing like Monday? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yesterday was my birthday. So that was good. We had uh, German chocolate cupcakes. Empty. No. And filter. Let's see, like this one. Use just instead. Oh, it now works for many sequence like types. What? Inputs C contain wait a second. That's a container. Oh. Oh, it's implemented on these. Well, look at that. I didn't know that. So instead of repeated exactly blah, 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 bit like this for our code fence, we could have had that well with you know double quotes and stuff wow oh, okay I'm gonna comment this out just to see that work yeah 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 Mm-hmm. 
First off, is our is our test correct? Zero to nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Is that supposed to be twenty-two? It is supposed to be twenty-two. Let me double check that. That's 21, 22, 23. These are correct. Oh, I put a false here. Probably because I wanted to see the debug info. That's why our test was failing. That was an easy, easy fix. Good kind of setup for the Monday morning. All right, we can do this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got those other emoticons to fix too. Just work on this piece here. The scheme is going to be equal to just HTTP. Well, I'm going to include that piece. Dot or just I wonder if we should be more clever with this, right? it doesn't know the the output type yet And this is a oh, interesting. See, I thought we could simply implement or return this type here and then use it over here. It should be able to figure out type in for info for this. Upstream concerns here. Let's build match arms, href. We need 
that to exist here now. Alright. Type mismatch. Found signature defined here. Okay. Expected due to this. Oh, I see. It's because we didn't didn't map it from a vector of chars to something else. of this. So what should our output for this be? A vector of chars, I think. And we still have to collect it. I think we have to collect it still. This match, okay, string. Why does it still think that it's this? Expected function signature part found string. See, it still thinks it's Twitch message parser part. I thought I removed that down here. Scheme, okay. Okay, missed a piece. See, this, this even says char is the output type, vector of chars. We need to collect that. Just return a string or something, right? But we want to return a parser that then knows how to dot map it into a string, right? Let's see if we collect here. That's that's the wrong spot. And our return type would be wrong. So I think we have to collect up here. What were we doing before? For let's say the code fence. Okay, yeah, it just collects into a string and then later we map. Satisfied. Hmm. I see because okay, okay. I, I I think it's just too early for us to to this. We should probably simply a parser that returns a string here instead of that. Similar to the other ones. Now, yes, of course, this one doesn't do that yet. It's not implemented for just, right? I think we're getting a little sidetracked on that because it's hardly even here. Viper Gamings. 
what's your question? I hope it's about the Rust programming language. Or, or just something in general, not the Rust game, because I don't play that. We're going to have those pieces. So we have the scheme, but the domain part. And what is the domain going to be? It's going to be, oh, we're gonna look at the RFC again. Actually, they call it a host, don't they? Let's switch that. Oh, it could be IP addresses. Fully qualified domain names take the form as described here. Domain, subdomain, or what space? What? Letter or digit. What is this one? It can have a hyphen. Letter, digit, hyphen, string, I see. Any one of the 52 alphabetic characters, A through Z. Any of the numbers and hyphens. Oh, I got my new chair. I'm really liking it. It's cool. We could filter here. Because we'll want the domain part. Optionally followed by a decimal. Like a period. And possibly another another domain part. So let's call this let's just use their their terms. They have a label. Oh RFC A22. I implemented that. I implemented a parser of that in C like twenty years ago. And then there was the extension, RFC 2822, and yeah, all sorts of fun. Hmm. Ah, yes. Okay. Try to just collapse this. Host. It's going to be um, asking numeric or hyphen. CH dot is ASCII, what is it? Is um, I 
What is CH here? Oh, they're saying it's unknown? Oh, no, this is a char. <laughs> is Elf ASCII alphanumeric or CH equals hyphen? You have hyphen hyphen like two subsequent hyphens for our case we're not validating these i don't care all right that answers that it <laughs> doesn't matter this is chomsky primitive filter And Chomsky? Yes, good. Why, why are you so grumpy today, Visual Studio? Did my rust get bad over the weekend? Mismatch type for closure. We're supposed to return a bool. Oh, it's a reference to. Borrowed. Yes. Wrong side. My rust did get bad over the weekend. to do that. Borrow that one. That's so weird. Alright, so there's our more of a domain or subdomain. Let's say subdomain. And then we could have this followed by a dot followed by a subdomain, right? is going to be no not, the, not this one so domain dot chain so we can chain a just dot Dot at least one time. No, 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 no. That this isn't quite right. We need um, we just dot chain subdomain. So we have the subdomain, and it might be chained with these other things, uh, or not. I put the or not at the wrong place then. I think it should be here.
Oh, because it's an option? Does this give us? Or not, okay. Attempt to parse something, but only if it exists. <laughs> Regex will work fine for URLs. Yeah, but we already have this Chumsky parser, so. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, nothing goes wrong with theirs. Part of this is trying to figure out how Chumsky, how to build things with Chumsky. But I, I, I get the. Uh, yeah, the, well, trolling, that's good. Um. <laughs> Let's reverse subdomain. that one today then I'm not thumbs upping the ones I like gotta remember to do that usually when the song changes that I remember I need to go like I enjoyed that I need to thumbs up it but mm, nope never quite works out okay Maybe we can set this up a different way. Subdomain dot chain. Really, I want the Can we just map that that optional nothing to, to something else? Let's see, what's it say here? Chaining that is not going to work then. Unless we map it to a character, which would be weird. That w that would be weird. Check their docs. I wonder if there's something else I should be using. Active. Filter map just none of, one of. Sequence is deprecated. Recursive. Say no, we don't want recursive. Oh, we could go recursive and then flatten it, though. Wow, that was loud. But no, let's not do that. Da -da -da, prelude? What's in the prelude? Choice. Filter. Filter map. Separated by This is perfect, separated by 
So we just have domains or subdomains separated by dot. That, that's what we want. Um, just that. Okay. And we want to return our scheme dot then subdomain. Oh no no we can chain these dot chain. Stir what? Okay, no, it's just so we didn't collect that. Oh, where's where's Goodness, trying to parse this. Separated by filter, just char char, simple char char. Thousand line functions with indentations, <laughs> almost twenty. Oh my goodness! <laughs> A buddy texted me over the weekend saying that Chat GPT was getting really good, and. And that the, um, it's going to start screwing up the, um, kind of remote interviews, right? Because people will just, you know, toss the question to chat GPT and then read the answers. Um, I don't know. I, I think maybe for some basic stuff. Sure. But I don't think that'd work for like it might get you past like a phone screen or something. But as soon as you start digging into things, and I think it's gonna work well enough. Writes well about well-known facts. Yeah, my usual like the the I used to give an interview that I really liked giving. Because um, I did the same interview for a long, long period of time. So I had lots of kind of information on it. Um, and basically it, w it would start out, let's let's do FizzBuzz, right? Whatever language you want, we'll do FizzBuzz. And, and then once it's implemented, right? You know, kind of, kind of an icebreaker, right? Implementing FizzBuzz isn't all that challenging, so it, it helps the interviewee get more comfortable, right? And we can interact and and get some, you know, like just good chat going and, and back and forth. And then I'll start to take pieces away from the programming language that they're using. And that, that's where you really see 
how somebody thinks, right? Like, okay, well, now we're gonna we're gonna use you know, the same program programming language, but modulus doesn't exist. How do we change it? And, and and I loved giving that interview for for coders that you know are just gonna be doing like web development stuff like that, just to see how they think, see how they they you know consider how to get around problems. Right? Um, it was it was pretty entertaining. I don't think I'm actually going to be giving that ever again, uh, but it was fun. It was a fun. Uh, just, I don't know. I had uh, another uh, senior dev that I interviewed. He actually gave me feedback on that later after we hired him. He's like, that was the best interview I've ever had. <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it, uh, um, I remember his interview. Um, I, thought, I thought it really did kind of do what it was supposed to, right? It helped break the ice. And then, you know, we, we got comfortable with each other. And they just dug into the problem, and it was it was good. So, uh, you know, you're interviewing more than just can somebody code, right? You're also interviewing can I get along with them, and you want them to have a sense of would they like working with you. Right, because the interview is two streets or a two-way street, not two streets. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. And I, I really think that it's it's very important that somebody is comfortable and that they got what they wanted out of an interview. Is that, is that because? Is it because of the schemes? It is because of the schemes. I collect that in Vectchar. Stores not an iterator. Find dot map. And uh, s to s dot chars. Still feel like that's off. Scheme check. Oh, because it's yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not supposed to. Okay. This is interesting that, that when you map something or match something with just, if you're using more than just one character, it's everywhere else we're using chars, and here we're using a stir. So how do we get this back into char land? Do I have to specify the output? I see. Oh, hold on. Chars. Because it takes an iterator, right? Does it have chars? Yeah, it, well, I think with just, you can give it um, an iterable. Where was that? container okay and it's implemented for a series of things like stir oh we could we could give it a an array of chars collect those i think we'll just instead of 
collecting these into a vector. Let's just... My goodness, this is harder. But you said, you said here. I want to borrow that. All right, fine. We'll look, look at the air. Could just have it a vector and. I thought it was implemented for T of N, right? Here. This one. Oh, this this is like No, this this is an array. Alright. That doesn't seem to be if we simply did that, now it's happy. Okay. Smash types. Oh, because these are fine. I'm borrowing them at that point. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, so at this point, it's because we were borrowing uh, vectors of chars. And if we remove that, it's happy. Well, happier. Affect. Let's just do a string. we go dun, dun, dun. all right so we have the host you started to visualize the function eating the values now yeah and i i wrote an email parser in c 20 years ago and it, it was for this this company um normally i don't share about companies but <laughs> i made this one Uh, it's for web group media. Oh, no way. <laughs> um, did they put that over here? Okay. Yeah, the main main company uh, website's gone. But uh, it was for this, this project here. And um, this was back when PHP didn't have a good mail parser. And so we wrote one. I wrote one in C. And oh, you know what? This the code is all still available, isn't it? It's in uh, GitHub.com. Standard. It's over here. Yeah, it is. Small business partner. Advent. Oh, what's he doing? Fifteen hours ago. Look at that. And he's still doing PHP. Nothing wrong with that. But I think it was a uh, parser. That's somewhere. Around here somewhere, but... Um,
This is the main thing. It was like, um, I don't know where it is. Media. Oh, okay. And the bar was a special barrier to digestion. <laughs> yes, like an energy shield. But at some point, we started doing um, hosted and managed versions of this, kind of like SaaS, right? Before before SaaS was a big big thing um, for a lot of software, and it was good. Uh, it was very useful for trying to uh, manage it because occasionally you would get uh, emails that the parser just couldn't handle. And so we set it up so that we would collect those on those servers and then you know, enhance the parser, enhance the parser. And millions and millions of emails went through this thing until you know, like it got to the point where it was just rock solid. Um, it's a lot of iteration. The spammers, they be spamming, and they they try to manipulate the RFCs, like all the little, like little tiny changes, right? Just to get the uh, the virus detection or you know the 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 other plugins that somebody might have in their MTA to not be able to parse the message and just let it through, because um, that's usually what happens. People will configure their MTA such that if if uh, the spam filter can't match it or fails to recognize it or the virus one does the same that it just goes through so we have the host we got the subdomain what are we going to do after that I mean, do we need to maybe maybe at this point it's just is this going to be the path the query and the and the hash What, what do we want to do for that? Is it just, we could just run to the end, right? Just say, now start looking for a space. And quite frankly, we could have done that with the subdomain. All right. Let's see. some characters here tokenizing or by red <laughs> yeah <laughs> you had an html like templating language for a social media site that i parsed with a regex <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh that that sounds that sounds excruciating um Sanitize. Do we need to sanitize URLs? No, I don't think so. Okay. 
Now, how do you say that? Is that, is that I-40? E-Hill? Is that an H? Hey, good morning. Today we are working on um, using the Chomsky library to parse URLs. Because in the bigger picture, we're actually working on this, this chat client on the right here. And we, we added a couple of interesting things to it. Uh, you can typing something here. Foo. We, we added a uh, awesome colorization. Like text and stuff. Oh, we forgot to build. I forgot to build it. I forgot to build the new one. Oh, we've got a new version. Um, Okay, but we added some special features to it. We can detect code. Uh, you can use fences and um, describe what kind of code it is so that the, uh, the engine can colorize it appropriately. Um, and we're trying to add support to identify links so that they are clickable instead of just text. Okay, that makes it through. Let's run the test. Perfect. Oh, it stopped at... Why did it stop there? So we did get some data back. It did not parse everything. Um, let's close that. Going back to our parsing lib. Using this href parser. You can see that our... It matched the first part and the F, but not anything past there. Oh, oh, here, our filter. You know what? I want to change this because of this hyphen. I want this filter to be similar to the, uh, the, the subdomain um, in that it's separated by dot. I want to have like a subdomain part. Wait. Let's see if we can change this just a little. So that has to be alphanumeric. Right? Separated by just hyphen so a little sleepy there we go okay. and this is repeated no 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 that should give us should give us a, a list of them right What's our types on this? It's hard to see. It does feel like that there's some trickiness in using the Chomsky library, getting the the types that you're matching uh, consistent, right? Having these as chars, when we're saying just match this sequence, right? And it feels like separated by just made this a list of things. Um, look at this here, it's, it's a parser. So separated by parser, surrounding a, a filter and the output is char vector of, I, I can't tell separated by a filter that goes to here and then just here oh so this is a separated by b yeah, that seems okay what's the error now 
Type in annotations needed. Cannot infer the type of parameter T. Okay, where is parameter T? Go on the chain. And where where is type T here? On chain? T. Okay, that's that's the type that we're matching. That's the char. Underscore. Uh, okay. I don't know the type there. That would be like the the filter, blah blah blah. So let's put that here so that it knows what the type is. backwards t is there so how do we map that p other p parser so t is not there but u is a chain of t okay so both i which i think is the input Analyzer knows what this is. We would have to give it this this whole section here as the type or part of it. I, I would expect the whole thing. Or like a, a jazz club, like a smoky, like movie, right? Like, oh. Fascinating. And th this was because we changed the separated by. So if we. Yeah, it was. Right, the thing that chained changed here was this filter um i moved the hyphen outside right i moved the hyphen in, into this so i think on this subdomain maybe it's trying to yeah it, i don't know separated by Gonna do that. Do does filter need something to collect or something? Oh, does does filter need to collect or something? Oh, interesting. That that could be. What would it collect into? A vector of chars? It's already a vector of chars. If we change that into anything else, then our parser chain won't be um, unified.
we could say that this the dynimple of this, right? Can we, can we skip the dine bit? I could try to box it and see if it's actually that, that type still. Dine Impel Parser. I feel like there was a way to do this. Um to be able to specify the type on the left hand side with a um, impulse. Just to be able to force an error earlier in the chain. Oh, I, th I think I might need to do that. Take a expect a semicolon. What? One, two. You got your friends confused. Is this separated by the collection? Let's see. Yeah, separated by um it's uh, like what we were using for the subdomain. Oops, sorry if you're reading that. Uh, um, it lets you match a parser separated by uh, another sequence, right? So in this case, we have we have the ASCII numeric, um, which might have hyphens in it, at the subdomain part, which would be ASCII numeric plus hyphen, right? In that mix, match any number of those, and then. Um, build the host on line 114 from that subdomain separated by dots so you can have a dot b dot c dot d right or say an ip address right um, and in this case so our filter is mass matching just those asking numeric i'm sorry those alphanumerics so they may be separated by a hyphen and that gives us a separator by wrapping a filter and then our host now this just gets a little more complicated how's the filter closure called um I don't, is it defining it for later? It is defining it for later. Uh, we are chaining these parser, parsers together in order to build uh, a single parser that will be used here just to be able to match an href. I think... I'm going to give this a char underscore underscore You know what I when I started doing that I I, I saw the answer. So I think because T here is passed into the the chain. So we could just specify T as the first item. I was distracted with that before. I didn't see it. So if we do that, we give it the type that we want to preserve. And because sometimes Rust will do it, um, will do the type inference backwards right, from the tail up. It's usually up with async stuff, so I don't know why, why it happened here. Maybe because of the return type? I, mm, I don't know. Because it feels like it's also in the return type. Right? Okay. Redundant closure. Oh, yes. Please change that. Thank you. And host isn't used yet. Perfect. 
All right, so we have filter. We have ASCII numeric. And this could be repeated dot at least once separated by hyphen. Okay, that might have fixed that. What? Oh, trait bound. What? We need to collect this into a vector of chars or flatten it. I think we need to flatten. Is that less than ideal to do those wildcard generics? Um, uh, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, because otherwise, this chain here would be massive. It, it would look something like this, and we would have trouble just managing it. But because of the way that... Here, let's see. I get the, uh, the list here. Because of the way that, that this is built up, you can see that what we care about is actually the first generic. And Rust can infer the rest. It just didn't know what T was. Yep, exactly. Um, however, it will know that, that you know, this is going to be some trait, but it will have the type here on that generic. Because we provide it with the T there. Uh, but it is having an issue with this. So flatten, I think, is supposed to take nested parsers and flatten them into one. And I think what we had before, if we look at subdomain now, let's see, char, char, simple char. Yeah, this still looks good. But here... The trait bound vector of vector char not satisfied right, because it's not a chain char. It, it will because chain isn't implement, implemented for it. So we have to flatten those. Maybe it should be on this portion. Ah, yes. Okay. Because of the repeat, we ended up getting a vector. And then we had to flatten that. Okay. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with Chomsky. This is, this is, I don't know, step by step, you know? Like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's, that's what Chomsky feels like here. Got a lot of jazz in this, uh, surprise me. Here, we'll thumbs up this one. Based on the first five seconds of the song. All right, so now we're not using host. So we are chaining scheme. And this should be host now, right? Ah, now it's, it's winding again. Flatten. Uh, look at that new trick we learned. All right. Let's check our test. Barbaz, look at this. It just stripped the dots out of there. <laughs> I, I presume our hyphens would be gone as well. Yes. Okay. It's working. Hey. <laughs> Just guess where to put the hyphens and the dots.
I think flatten was the wrong thing to do here. We, we maybe should have used like a, a fold R. Uh, where is it? Let's go back to here. Alternate, no, let's, uh, where is it? Modules, uh, combinator. Yeah, I thought this separated by, which is neat to have this allow leading and trailing. That, that's just, it makes that easy. Okay. But then if we wanted to include those, I think fold R, because we need to capture each one of those. Because right now we're flattening, and I think it's just, it's omitting it in the flatten. So we could flatten it manually using fold R. Let's try it just to get get the hyphen back. Um, now I've never used fold R here. And what, what are the arguments here? A function where a function takes item and B, where B is what? Something. Is that the return type? Output of the original parser must be of type into iterator. Okay, A, B, because right folds work backwards. Yes. Double in. Okay, so. Okay. And what are these types? Um, they should both be... Oh, actually, we don't know what they are. Go to the tests. Oops, go back. Separated by that, fold A. What is A here? Okay. They do have a to-do... Um, Let's just say we give it uh, vec, an empty thing at the moment. <laughs> oh, come on, figure it out. Of a char, oh, or comma, fine, don't care. A char. I think it's choking on the return type, but I'm not sure. Accumulator item, fold versus fold. So, in this case, you're taking uh, AST and reducing it into uh, a vector right? or, or some iterator. I, I don't think this is the same as, um, the fold on the iterator types. Now th this is separate for, for Chomsky. Um, yeah. let's see if they have kind of a higher level. They, they had a better thing for it. Let's just go back. It takes two values and you're supposed to output one, right? Um, and in this case, it would be something that that's iterable um, or into iterator it supports into iterator. Okay, so if I ignore that freaking out and we just try to implement this, what is the type here? A, it's unknown, B is unknown. Let's say that these are 
It's a fold R, I think B and A. This returns. I'm gonna give it something and have it yell at me. Okay. Is it gonna yell? No. Lifetime A, B, and F. So A item, this would be the item for the iterator. And B is the unique item. I want, I would like to think that these are both. I know this isn't going to be correct, but I'm just going to try to silence some things. And I think this is really going to be... Because it's, it's a tree-like structure, right? And so... With the fold R, we should just get two items. But it might be this whole left side, right? It's going to be this. It's going to be that item. Okay. Huh. What would that be? A is into iterator, which I believe would be that the the non hyphen, right? Whatever that is, which I'm expecting it to be of uh, iterator of chars, right? Because right fold work backwards, the iterator must implement double ended iterator. Yes. Let's go to their tutorial. I think we have it around here. Oh, yes. They have an ASCII graph, fold R here. So op. In this case, they have something similar where that's just getting ignored. Then they have the right hand side, which is the atom all the integer so they're creating their enum here and boxing the right hand side and they're building out an AST fold R functions repeatedly applying the function to fold the elements into a single element like so And in our case, how would this work? We get this token and that, right? Two elements. So in our case, we would get a vector of, or basically an iterator of chars and our hyphen. That's not true because we don't have hyphens only at the end. We would have the domain part, the, the, the text, and then we'd have a hyphen, and then more text, and then a hyphen, and then text, or something. Vector TU above there. We'll take an output for a vector t u, and it will fold it to a single u by repeatedly. Okay. I wonder if we should use it just a fold then. Do they do they go into fold as well?
Oh, was that? Uh, fold R. Um, fold L. Let's do fold L. Because I think we're going to have the domain part and then that. I, I just don't understand. Um, here, let, let me explain what's in my head. Uh, so we're going to have like foo dash bar dash bass, right? And that's going to become what here, right? It's going to be an array of foo and then dash bar. And then that will be, th then it'll have like another baz to it. I'm just confused about what, what this does, where we have a word matched and then it's separated by, I'm not sure what separated by gives us here. What is the output of separated by? The output of this type is, uh, of this parser is vec. Oh. Do they just get rid of the dash? Okay, fold might be the wrong thing then. A vector. Oh yes, they're just getting rid of those. Yeah, let's get rid of the fold. I think I'm gonna back out of that because it just doesn't match the the structure here. So instead, oh, how do we add those hyphens back? Like zip it with something. In this case, we get the list, up, right? But we need to add. We need to insert between each of those items something else. Can we have like a zipping iterator or something? Um, and the, what, what do we have in this case? Join? Uh, do they? I wonder if Chomsky has a join. Standard.rs join. Slice join or iterator join? Probably iterator join, right? What does slice join give us? It's an iterator? But we don't, that brings it all together. And this converts our chars to something else. Hmm. Here, here. list.join. Our separator, our separator is um, hyphen at this point. save oh interesting the trait bound it's not satisfied the following types what is this here map Oh, it's a vector vector char.
Okay. So we have our words, right, which are vectors of chars, and we have a vector of our words. So, so instead of that, can we join with vec hyphen, like so? Satisfy the following time, okay. Borrow that. Great chain is implemented for picture. So we have to flatten this? Flect into a vector of char. This would be flatten. Is there a... Uh, is there a flatten on that? Separator. See, I thought that would have worked. I get it. Okay. Want we want vector flatten or. Slice flatten. Oh, it's nightly only. Okay. Iter flatten. This is vector vector char, and we can flatten into back char what? oh it takes nothing okay fine but this join here isn't satisfied flat map oh maybe huh. oh <laughs> we can actually use um fold here, right? The regular fold. Because in this case we want what the the initial uh, we have our list dot iter dot now let's do into iter dot into iter dot fold. Okay, so we take where where do we specify here it is a vector and then our function the accumulator and then the value. To return the accumulator every time. ACC dot. Let's see, what's our data at this point? Our data is a vector of chars. So we need to append our vector of chars to the accumulator and. We're going to end up with an extra hyphen at the end. Oh, not if we check to see if it's empty. Okay, if acc dot is empty, if it's not empty, 
Then we add a hyphen. Okay, ACC dot push. Give it a char hyphen. Otherwise, we append. That's data. We'll return that. Okay, this needs to be what a reference. What did append want? Expected always oh, are. Oh, no, no, this has to be mutable, right? Because we're consuming it. And borrow ACC is mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Okay. Oh, we need a semicolon. Fine. Is there adding a hyph? Okay. Now let's just see, let's just see if, if we get hyphens back in our test data. Oh, we do. We get foo bar dash. Bar bas, foo bar bat. Wait, what? Oh, because the dot is missing. Fine. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um. Hold on a sec. All right, subdomain. Now we have to do the same thing with this one. That seems... Hmm. A better way. I feel like there's got to be a better way. I like the join idea. Um, problem I was having with join. Because maybe it's just like a join and collect. That I'm missing like flatten join collect something like that where is join oh intersperse Ooh. nightly only okay we'll suffer through it we'll, we'll use intersperse All right, let's, I'm going to just simply comment that out. Map, we're still going to use map with our list. All right, list dot into iter, intersperse. We want to intersperse, what? Does that have to be? Um, okay, let's just give it a uh, char. Doesn't like char. Okay. Uh, is it because the types are wrong? Because our list is a vector vector. Uh, can we flatten first? Flat map. I think we need to flatten and then intersperse. What's this give us? Good 
have one argument. Um, sure. What's that going to be, though? It has to be the same as self item. So what is self item at this point? So we had a vector of vector of chars. Now we have a vector of chars, maybe. Let's double check. Oh, okay. We're flattening into a vector of chars. Flatten into iter vector chars. This here is a vector vector chars, okay. To intersperse. Sure. Um, that's what I would like it to be. Unit is not an iterator. Where? Oh, down below. Oh, because we're not returning anything yet? Collect it into uh, Vec Char. Unstable library feature. Yeah, we can deal with that. Uh, yeah, use of unstable library feature. Recently added. Why is that not one of our, our messages there? We have one of those. Don't we? We need to put that up at the top of this file. level. Okay, let's put it in main. Snake case name. Uh, fine. Uh, cargo. Join these. I like that better. wish this could give us something else though you know like an iterator or something else instead of having to get the the vector of those yeah let's get rid of that now we do the same thing here instead of this flatten which gets rid of it we need to map with a dot. <laughs> well, 
Boom. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the flat, I don't know. Uh, this here is a vector of vectors, right? Vector, vector, char. So we have intuiter, right? So at this point, we're getting vector chars. So we flatten it. So we just have vector chars. And we intersperse, oh, we intersperse at the wrong spot. Okay, so that should be here with intersperse with, uh, no, intersperse back dash boom, like so. Oh, can you not do that? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, just show us. Expect to struct vac found. Oh, fine. All right. Do we even... Okay, so we got the foo bar at the right spot. Do we need to flatten then? Yes. Because... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that makes sense. Intersperse. Boom, got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll just, we'll just, um, I'll describe what they are. Possible slash and then and then path parts out to question mark Match slash path right this basically repeating so we can match what's allowed in a path part a lot of things right it's not nearly as strict as the domain part because domain has to match the kind of ancient DNS system but path parts you could do uni you could do like unicode all sorts of stuff in there right so we need to match what things aren't maybe we just take one take until we find a, a character we don't like right what would the very end of this look like uh end of the stream or or what else? Maybe a, a one of those forbidden characters. Right? Where's the RFC on the forbidden characters? Uh, da, 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 not there. Not there. What was it? Unsafe, not forbidden, unsafe characters.
funny because we went out of like out of the way to do these parts <laughs> and now i'm thinking of just like kind of skimping um all right i guess schemes internet syntax we're not we're not supporting port or the user colon password add piece right looking for the URL path the rest of the locator consists of data specific to the scheme mm. okay try to find FTP URL path? No. Did that, that skip around? What? That's all we get for that? HTTP. Oh, they just call it path. Okay. If neither path nor search part is present, the slash may also be omitted. Right. So I'm thinking of just having a, a path separated by, you know, slash, right? W but with that prefix option. Go for. Wow. Mail to news NTP telnet. Files, goodness, Prospero. We're almost to the end of this. Could be enough. Yeah, okay. That'll work. Okay, URL path. Ooh, what's XCHAR? Depends on protocol. See section 3 1. No! <laughs> I don't want to go to section 3-1 because they didn't have the BNF stuff there. Man. Sparrow path. Okay, W path. Let's see. We just want... Oh, we have H path. So we have an H segment. H segment is a uchar or any of these okay <laughs> when you try to parse dns <laughs> i keep thinking that would be a fun project but then then i wake up and realize it was a bad dream i don't know it's just dns is going to be around forever so setting up like a little you know, SaaS project with like cheap DNS. And just make a commodity service, get pennies for it, you know. Have everybody use it. Just make it simple, easy. Right. What's a U-char? Do they define that up above? You char. Char, you char. Here we go. Unreserved or escape? Ooh. Ooh. Alpha digit safe or extra? Alpha digit safe. Extra. I thought, I thought browsers worked with Unicode. I don't see Unicode in here. Oh, 
Oh, maybe it's not in the path part, but in the query part. That could be. All right, so a U-char, which I have, let's come in here. U-char. I want to link to this like position here, but it's unreserved or escape. Okay. Where's unreserved? just take this Fine. it's not there that come up here okay comment it out good <clears throat> so low alpha and high alpha I don't think we need to differentiate between the two because we'll be using them both at the same time so if we say unreserved so we're trying to get you char So we need this piece here. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Let's let's create U char here. U char is going to be equal to unreserved, but an unreserved is alphanumeric. Does did they have that? Um I thought they had a, a parser for that. Chomsky, was it text? Was it, uh, ASCII digits. Okay, so they have digits, but not, Oh, that won't work for us. Okay, so we need a filter. Um, pH dot is I thought wait, CH is a char. ASCII alphanumeric. Okay, so that gets alpha digit, but now we need safe and extra. Let's uh, let let's actually put this over here. That's okay, good. Let u chart equals ASCII alphanumeric dot or safe or extra. Let's safe equals to do and extra. Yeah, extra. Okay. Today to do. There we go. Sierra, oh, let's get rid of the type mismatch and closure arguments expected for. Oh, is this a, uh, oops, borrow char, okay. Char char e.
Interesting. So we need to give it a uh, to do. So it's a vec char char underscore. Let's just just forget I even asked. Let's safe equals. Now what is safe? Safe is. Oh, any of those. There was like a either right. Uh, chain combinator is it primitive? One of. Let me give it the the chars. Okay. This is going to be safe. These dollar sign hyphen underscore dot plus. Okay. Those are safe. And hmm. oh, I did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Score, score. Simple char. There we go. We need to tell it the error type. Okay, as alphanumeric. Or that. Or let extra equals one of, actually, it's just star single quote, left, right, comma, okay, or extra. Yeah, this is Chomsky. This is Chomsky. This is uchar. Uchar, we have unreserved, unreserved. Okay, so we have alpha digit, all of those. We need escape. Escape is percent hex hex. Ooh, interesting. And what's hex? Hex is digit or, okay. Seems fine. Let x equals. Now let's see, what do we want to do here? We want to filter for numeric, or did they, they had they had a numeric, didn't they? Um, that was in text digits. Uh, do we want one or more? How many do we want? We we can't do that. We just want digit equals one of <laughs> yes. Where's digit? Um, yes, I didn't do finish hex yet. Hex is digit dot or, and then we need yeah. 
kind of want this to be a hex char. C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Thank you, Clippy. Okay. And then for hex, we want... I'm going to chars. Oh, no, I like the singular there. Okay, so for hex... Escape, where's escape? I didn't do escape yet, okay. Escape is equal to... Just... Percent... And... Do we chain two of these? Chain, um, oh, what are we chaining? Hex, hex, and, okay. Uh, hex, uh, chain, uh, hex. What does chain do again? Um, one thing and then the other thing, okay. And this clone. Okay, so now we have escape. So you char gets or escape. Suspected. Oh, it's a chain dot flatten. Okay, what? Well, let's let's see what this type is. It's that simple. Um, I think it's the chain that's getting it. But I'm not sure. Let's see. Expected function. Function, really? Why function? It's escape? I thought it would... Would it... Expect... Just like we had before, we needed to have. Oh, uh, here it's just fine. Here, just. Yeah, I think it need, needed to be that. Expected char, found struct vector. Yeah, but now, now the type here is. I, I can't even tell. point of the returns a char, but it returns a vector of chars. Oh, because these are all singular, aren't they? But this one could be multiple. Ah, okay.
So is alphanumeric, could be multiple. Did. Or safe, dot repeated. Or extra. Repeated. Look at that. Okay, but now now we've just defined what uchar is. Um, okay, so is there a different way to do that? Because in this case, this will always return like a, a vector of these, right? Like it's not... Oops, oh, can I get rid of that? Yeah, okay, so we didn't need to collect... will always be more than one because because of this escape here and we have to keep the types similar okay so zero or one zero or one of each of those excuse me zero or more of each of those and so now we have defined uchar <laughs> coming back where was it HTTP, we got uchar. Okay, so we got an H segment. I'm gonna put this stuff up here, uh, maybe down here. on H segment. So we got the uchar. Right H segment equals to that's going to be uchar or and then all these extra pieces. Interesting, we have not seen, yeah, so question mark's not there yet. We're not doing the search. I didn't realize that ampersand was allowed earlier in the path. Hmm, learn some. One of. And this is going to be semicolon. Uh, uh, semicolon colon at and equals okay dot repeated because the others are vectors now this one has to be a vector too well the the question mark can't appear yet, right, in the H segment, because the H segment is just part of the H path. So the H path happens, and then question mark, and then search. And search, so the H segment and the search actually look identical, I think. Yeah, they, they look the same. It was a turn of phrase, no box. Oh! <laughs> Wait about, yes. <laughs> okay, let search equals clone of excuse me uh, h segment dot clone just to fill that out for later. Uh, all right, and let h path equals to h segment dot separated by 
Okay, no, our learnings from before. We need to have that, and then we need to do the fancy little uh, combine on there. Oh. Separated by other, and this will be a vector of chars. Okay, dot allow leading. Oh, we want we want let it. No, we can't. Can't. Okay. Bound. Oh, uh, was that supposed to be a reference? Oh, separated by. Oh, just, 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 just. My mistake. Just. And, okay. That'll be our next test. Okay. All right, so what do we have? We have H path. So we need to have this, this here. Now, all of this is optional. I'm just going to have let path equals just that dot chain h path I am huh, chain so chain the path the types are different right because this H path is a vector of char and just is not. Now that that should work out, right? Do we have to map that to a vector of chars? I see. Okay. Uh, da da da. I. Match types. Inner. Oh, I see. And High penetrations needed. Cannot infer type of parameter T. What is parameter T? Okay. It's T. T is just the type. That should be a chain. Oh, I see. Um, char. Bound vector vector what? Okay. I think it's because of the previous pieces in the H path. Now this is a vector of vector. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like we're working with um, async code with all of this. Oh my goodness. Not satisfied. Let's look at the error. Maybe we should chain a vector of chars at this point. That feels weird, though. Then when do we flatten it? Right? That's too nested. Um, 
Vector Vector. <laughs> So let's see, what do we have here? What is what is H path? It's a segment separated by this. Oh, that we didn't flatten that. Alright, we didn't give it one of one of these things. Uh, separated by it. Boom. Okay. And that needs to be one of those. Ah, that was, that was a problem. Or separated by gives us this vector of vectors, right? Okay, so we have our slash and that and the path and the whole path is going to be or none or not. Oh, but that that gives us that'll be an option. Because that actually returns where's, where's the option? Uh, First one, let's see if it gets a cookie. Uh, da, da. I don't see it. <laughs> okay, or not. Yeah, the output is option of of O. <laughs> you see it now. <laughs> I don't see it. Uh, Pat, let me start at the beginning again. Options. If you one of a math and vector symbol or try one of. It is not in there. All right. All right. You get negative one cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I gotta go soon alright so what's left on path so path so we have this and this whole section is, is optional right and so we're chaining the host then we chain the path Right, and what do they call that? This, yeah, here we have the path and search, and I'm, I'm calling it path. And the the path is going to have the path and the search in it, but we haven't implemented search. Option. Oh, because of the option. Are repeated there? Which line? The spec. Okay. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right, because we did not take that into account. Uh, oh, we did. We did with the separated by. So the separated by does account for uh, the right hand side here, the, the extra, the recursive part. I think. Yeah, yeah separated by. The problem we're having is the or not piece. Uh, this whole section. Dot. So we could say repeated instead. That would keep our types in line, right? I think, I think I'd prefer the or not, though. Uh, trait bound. Char, jump D chain, others run. 
it's not implemented for a vector a vector of char okay so where's vector vector char coming in nesting yes let's get rid of the repeated okay if we don't have that oh no 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 wrong one wrong one this one okay so if we don't have that it's okay right everything is the same type but as soon as we do like an or not now the type has changed now we have this option to a vector of chars not app oh, not wrap what wait what's what's unwrapped does Ch chumsky have like an unwrapped what? unwrapped for parsons that produce a result oh i see see this or not's getting me I don't want the sum or the none here. I just want it to be. One or more. We say repeat it at least once at max once. <laughs> exact oh repeated exactly once no uh at most one time so we say repeated at most one time maybe the then oh interesting so then press one thing then the other thing yielding a tuple of the two Ah, uh, no, no. Yeah, we don't want the tuple. But I think we could say repeated at most one time. Most one. because it's zero or one at this point oh but the, that but now we have to flatten that don't we okay. hard to speed run <laughs> the doctor the docs all right we're, we're going to test this Okay, Fubar Baz. All right, now let's, let's do this again. And then I gotta run. I, I know this is a really simple one, but. <gasps> Boom, I matched it. Okay. Beautiful. All right. RFC to parsing code. Done. Boom. Oh, oh look, we got we got a bunch of people today. It's really S T E F A. <laughs> that was hard for me to type. Well, thank you all for hanging out and for having that second second pair of eyes that really helped today. Um, so next till next time. Bye bye.